what do we mean by biodiversity hotspot? Now we know that when we look at Earth, the distribution of the population, just as the distribution of population of human beings is not uniform, the distribution of population of other species is also not uniform. There are some places of Earth where you could find a more dense population, and there are some places where you hardly find any population for various reasons. Now, biodiversity as a concept or bio, sorry biodiversity hotspot as a concept refers to certain regions of the world which need to satisfy two specific criteria set by an ecologist by the name Norman Mayers. So whenever someone talks about the biodiversity or, or the uh, importance of biodiversity, please remember Norman Mayers. So he has two very specific criteria for it for a region to be called as a biodiversity hotspot. The first criteria that he says is it must contain at least 0.5% or sorry, or 1500 species of vascular plants as endemic. First criteria is it must have 0.5% or 1500 species as in whichever is higher. Okay. So if, I, if it has 1 lakh species of, uh, of uh, vascular plants, then 0.5% of 1 lakh. So in that case, uh, how much does it come to? So 1,000 and 0.5 is 500 species. So in that case, no, then it's not a biodiversity hot, but it needs to be more. And what is a vascular plant? So without going into detail, if you remember our ninth standard biology or something, you would have heard of this term, xylem and phloem. Xylem and phloem. Xylem and phloem. So vascular plants are those plants which have this uh, special mechanism or a structure within them which helps them to transport the water nutrients and allows them to carry photosynthesis uh, using phloem and transportation of materials using xylem. So those are vascular plants. And not just that, so 0.5% or 1500 species of vascular plants as endemics. So it's not sufficient that if, uh, if it is, uh, uh, they are present there, they should be present only there. So that is so that's the first criteria. And so this makes it a biodiversity. It, this makes I mean criteria one makes the region as a high biodiversity, biodiversity region. Criteria two makes it a hotspot, technically speaking. So it has so many things, and then you compare it with its historical data. So it is not really specified whether we have to compare it with 50 years or 100 years. It is just said that with respect to its original habitat, it must have lost at least 70% of its original habitat. So any part of the world which satisfies these two criteria is called as a biodiversity hotspot. Okay, that's a simple definition. Two criteria. Again, this is also, uh, by the way, taken from NCR 12 standard. So hopefully, you know, you uh, you will have to spend less time on NCR if you are also reading NCR for NVAR. Okay. Now, what does the figure for biodiversity hotspot worldwide look? So worldwide, it is 36 areas. These 36 areas satisfy these two uh, criteria. So originally it was 25, that's okay. And these 35 area have 60% of the world's diversity. And not just in plants, but plants, avian, that is birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, all put together, they have 60% of the world's diversity in as small as 2.4% of the planet's surface area. So you can imagine they are extremely dense and extremely rich uh, biodiversity regions which are in the declining trend okay so that's your biodiversity hotspot does india have biodiversity hotspot the answer is yes india has four regions which are classified as biodiversity hotspot what are they i would want you to imagine the india map mentally the first one is western parts yeah western parts uh, it's it's a biodiversity hotspot the second one is the himalaya region the Himalaya itself is class is considered as a biodiversity hotspot. The third is Indo-Burma region. You can imagine Indo-Burma region, that is the eastern part of Arunachal Pradesh, then downwards, Nagaland, Manipur, Mithuram. That is the third one. Fourth one is an area called Sunda land. Now, Sunda land is actually a larger area which includes the Nicobar Islands of India. Are you able to understand? So Sundaland does not just mean Nicobar. Nicobar is part of a broader area called as Sundaland. Okay. So in case you want to uh, 
in case you want to know, just uh, have a look at it. Are you able to see this text? I hope you are able to. Yeah, so if you say Sundaland is a map, it doesn't show Indonesia. I just want to quickly show to you the image of Sundaland so that it's kind of clear in your uh, mind. Yeah, somewhat this, this area. Yeah, are you able to see this? This uh, green color that you have here, this dark green color that you have here, that is your Indonesia. And if you look at where our Nicobar is, I would suggest that you have a similar approach when you are studying. So that you can um, you can very quickly remember and understand it. So this is your map. So let's look at the map over here. Andaman and Nicobar. So clearly, as you may be knowing, Andaman and Nicobar. So these are two different sets of islands, separated by one of these channels, ATP channels, Sulu channel, and all. Now, if you see here, Andaman is here. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Yeah, here you go. Are you able to see both Andaman and Nicobar are very far. Even in that, Andaman at least is somewhat into the Bay of Bengal. But if you see the Nicobar Island, yeah, the southernmost point of Nicobar, Indra Point, have you heard of it? The southernmost point of India, technically, so to say, it is in the Nicobar Islands. And, and this Nicobar Island geologically is part of Indonesia and a larger region of Southeast Asia called the Sundaland. Are you able to understand? So, in the option, if you get Andaman Island, the answer is wrong. The answer is Nicobar Island. Yeah, I thought I'll just, you know, with the help of map, help you understand this. Because as you can see, Nicobar, the southernmost point of Nicobar is closer to Indonesia than it's to Andaman. It's very far away from India for sure. It is even very far from the southern island of Andaman. So these are two distinct sets of islands separated from each other by, you know, if you look at this, I don't know if you're able to see this. The scale is 500 kilometers over here. So 500 kilometers means this distance is approximately around 250 kilometers, but this distance looks like 750 kilometers or so. Okay, so that's your Nicobar Island. Okay. Let's get back to the <coughs> uh, biodiversity hotspot. Yeah, so globally, this is how the biodiversity hotspot looks like. So originally they had proposed 25, and then they added uh, 11 more and made it uh, 36. So in fact, uh, in India, Himalaya was added at a later stage globally. Okay. So that's on biodiversity hotspot, a very simple concept, a theoretical concept of what is a biodiversity hotspot, what are the two criteria, globally how the distribution of biodiversity uh, hotspot looks like, and India wise how does the biodiversity hotspot look like. So these are the uh, three, four points that we discussed and understood when, uh, when it comes to biodiversity.